Hi guys and welcome back to Stratified Sampling with R. In this part two we are continuing uh, in the application in our simulated example uh, using a population that we created in, at the end of part one and now we're about ready to start taking samples from that population and then making estimates. Okay, so this is pretty much a review of what we ended off with in the previous video. We looked at the population parameters from the population that we created. So if you didn't catch this, you definitely need to watch that. Uh, and, and actually, if you're following along with the code, you need to uh, grab that code, type it, and uh, uh, no place to copy and paste it. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll throw this in the in the uh, description section, but. Uh, what, however you do it, get the code up to where we are because we're about to uh, start taking samples from that population. Okay, so to do this, again, I refer back to my code. I'm going to first take a simple random sample. So if you forgot what simple random sampling was, um, and, and or you are interested in comparing the results from a simple random sample to a stratified sample, um, we're going to be able to do that here. So what I'm doing here, as I've commented, is I'm going to generate 1,000 simple random samples of size n is n equal to 50. Why? For the purposes of measuring the precision of estimate for mu. So you see this study, ultimately what I want to learn about is the average height of these 10,000 people that I call my population. Um, obviously, I know that from uh, what we just had up on the R console before. I know that the average height for the population was uh, exactly 70.02 something. We looked at it in the last video. But uh, we're going to pretend like we don't know that. And in a real scenario, you don't know what the true value for the average of the population is. And so that's why we're, you would take a sample to estimate that and that's what we're doing and specifically what we're going to do here is we're going to take a sim a thousand simple random samples of size 50 and in each one of these samples we're going to calculate an estimate for mu and what what better than something that we all are familiar with x bar which is just the sample mean so the sample mean will serve as our estimate for the population mean. Okay, so this is all review. So I wanted to quickly just mention this. So let's actually uh, generate the code for doing this. Okay, so again, I set the seed because I'm, I'm about to do some uh, random kind of uh, com component here. So what is that? I'm going to create a vector called x bar. And by, by taking so let me go inside. This is a, a three nested function. So let me go inside and work out. I'm going to use a sample function to sample 50 observations from the variable called height. So out of the 10,000 heights, I'm going to sample 50 of them randomly. So no one gets a special treatment. Okay, that's what simple. That's what simple random sample is. Furthermore, I don't want just one sample. I want a thousand of them. So I'm going to replicate this process 1,000 times. Okay. Furthermore, I don't, I'm not interested for the purposes of this presentation in looking at each of the sample values. All I want from each of these 1,000 samples is the mean, is x bar. So I apply a function to each of those thousand samples that are collected where I calculate the mean. So what I end up with here is going to be, we haven't run it yet, a 1,000 x bars. Okay? Obviously in a, real, in, a, in a typical study, one would only sample one time in whatever fashion. Okay? But we're trying to learn here, so we're taking a thousand samples. Okay. Now, once I have these samples, then I'm going to study them a bit. But let's just first generate these. Okay. 
if you want the same results as me, you have to use the same seed as me. If it, but it doesn't matter, OK? If I look at x bar right now, it's going to be 10,000 uh, uh, elements long, OK? I don't really want to do that, OK? Instead, what I'm interested in is calculating some measurements on it. So what's the average of the averages? What's the mean of the x bars? What's the variance of the x bars? So let's get those two. Okay, that's interesting. These are numbers that will that are going to be much more interesting for comparison later. Next, okay. So here I'm actually doing some calculation here. So let me give you the formula for what this is, and then you might recognize it. I'm trying to be as descriptive as possible, so much easier to write this out. Sigma squared sub x bar. So everyone remembers this from your basic stats course, but if you don't, what this was was plain old sigma squared, that's the variance of the population, over the sample size. Right? So all I'm doing there is getting the variance from all the heights from the population, but because the formula in for variance in R divides by n minus 1, I need to uh, fix that. So that's why I am doing all of this. I'm getting the sum of squares, and then I'm redividing it by n. So you see I'm dividing by n. So uh, that's just to, to get sigma. And then I'm dividing by 50. So there's there's n, OK? So this will tell me, let's, let's copy and paste this, OK, sigma squared. This tells me the variance of the x bars, theoretically, what it should be, OK? So, this is sigma squared x bar. This is an estimate of this guy. This is the standard, well, once we took the square root, I should say this is, OK, for lack of, uh, this is a symbol you may not see too much, uh, but uh, the explanation is that this guy is an estimate of the true s variance of the x bars. Okay, so theoretically they should be this, but I didn't generate every possible sample of size 50. Believe me, if I had, if I needed to generate every possible sam sample of size 50, it would be a lot more than a thousand. Okay, it would be an extraordinarily large number. But 1,000 is a decent amount to get a good estimate. And you see how close these two are. Okay? All right. So now you know what this guy is and what this guy is. Next, I want to look at, I want to actually kind of define this, give it a name. So all I'm doing here is repeating this except calling it sigma squared x bar hat. In fact, that's probably the symbol I should have used before. I used s squared sub x bar. Uh, preferably, you put a hat on it. That would have been a better way to, to do this. Okay, Hats usually in statistics indicate that they're an estimate of the version without a hat. So you know that this guy is actual sigma squared x bar. So here's our estimate of it, which actually is, is going to be this guy right here, right? OK, so that's somewhat interesting. That takes us a little bit off. Uh, but uh, so this is the results from taking a simple random sample. The important thing here is from, this, from, from these two, depending on whether we want to analyze it theoretically or what we actually observed, we'll be able to calculate our precision. And remember, an improvement in precision of the estimate is what we seek uh, in doing stratified sampling. So recall this number. In fact, later we'll come back to it, whether you look at uh, the, the estimated version or the actual version. Uh, 
recall these numbers because this should dramatically decrease uh, when we stratify this population, especially because I purposely made the two strata homogeneous. Okay, so now we can embark on the stratified sampling. And for that, let me do a part three. So be sure to subscribe, follow, share, and watch part three. This is where we're going to kind of uh, close this all out and see what a stratified random sample looks like and what benefits it actually provides.